Hello everyone, this is Defense Politics Asia and uh, this is the summary for the day of 737 for the 1st of March. And, uh, and uh, going to the strategic and tactical reporting, again, the Ukrainians have claimed another Sukhoi-34 that was shot down this time around over eastern Ukraine. And uh, the this uh, this Sukhoi-34 was shot down and they actually have uh, uh, some kind of a video footage or GIF showing something burning on the ground uh, somewhere, somehow. Uh, I, I shared it on DPA Telegram channel. You may want to you know check it out over there. And I want to move the mic a bit further because uh, this the, the the meter looks really loud. Yeah. So anyway, so uh yeah, you check it out on the DPA Telegram. Join the Telegram group. I also created a DPA WhatsApp group. So you may want to check it out. Uh, I will be posting more or less the same thing. So you know you can choose either one or both. Up to you. I personally. Uh, don't use the whatsapp channel that much i just created it uh, for you guys who actually prefers whatsapp so anyway um moving on to the southern front and also at, at the Kherson front uh the based on uh, russian information ukrainian forces are still at crinky crinky holes crinky holes so no uh so that is a uh, not disputed right now it's confirmed they are there so anyone that said the crinky was captured hi <sighs> Anyway, uh, the the on the opposite side, the uh, Ivaniska got shelled by the Russian uh, Russian forces. Uh, this according to the Russian Defense Ministry. Uh, over over at Inglets or Inglets, oops, I pressed the wrong button. Uh, over at Inglets, uh, the the Russians fired a uh, a barrage of uh, Urugan uh, long uh, multiple launch rocket systems. And uh, they basically hammered the entire settlement uh, because they detected Ukrainian forces unloading and loading uh, probably ammunition around this around this area here. They so they just bombard uh, almost the entire village randomly uh, because it is a multiple launch rocket system, so it's always going to be random. So and uh, that's all from the uh, Kherson front. We move on uh, to the Zaporizhia front. So this is the Zaporizhia city and uh, this is Zaporizhia front at the Zaporizhia front the action is only over at the Orykiv sector with the Russian forces continue their actions around here the Russians are reportedly fighting uh, or conducting uh, uh, operations okay I need to zoom out a bit uh, they, they, there's uh, fire missions on the Malatomashka according to the Russian Defense Ministry so I just want to highlight this first so that I can zoom in a bit and uh, over at the robotini Verbovis uh, region the Ukrainian uh, Orykiv salient uh, the Russian forces are attacking uh, over on the eastern part of uh, western part of Robotini fighting was reported at Robotini itself in the area of Novo Prokopivka as well as Verbove so let me double check the information uh the IC wrong, Novo Prokopivka, correct. So, uh, so the this is not a very big assault. This is just a fight fighting being mentioned, uh, by Raiba and uh, and by the Russian Defense Ministry. And this is this is a uh, very unusual, especially the naming of Novo Prokopivka, because this settlement is actually away from the front line or at least the claim front line so fighting being mentioned around this area suggests that uh, the russians may have lost uh robotini again there's a possibility or maybe they did not entrench within it so you know the ukrainians have taken it causing the fighting to be in the southern part of uh, robotini cars fighting in the area of novo prokopivka so uh that's all for the orikiv sector uh, and we move on uh, from the Zaporizhia front to the Donetsk front. So this is a uh, Donetsk front. At the Donetsk front, uh, there is fighting reported across the entire front line. We fighting reported at Staromayovsky, uh, Novodonetsk, uh, Do Novo Novodonetsk, uh, south of Zolotaneva, uh, Voleda, uh, Novo Mihailivka, north of Novo Novo Mihailivka, Boyeda, Ukrainian counter attack at no Boyeda. Uh, Georgivka and Krasnohorivka. Uh, of note, uh, the one at uh, Voleda as well as Staromayovsky and I think Novodonetsky. These are all fire missions. These are, these are not active assault. And uh, and uh, so this... And then uh, north of Zolotaneva, there was a Lancet strike being uh, recorded uh, to have attacked a Ukrainian tank uh, north of Zolotaneva. So not very important in that sense. So... Uh, so 
these are just fire missions, so you know nothing to really worry about. Over at this uh, Marinka sector, uh, the Russian forces have taken the southern part, which shows that uh, there is still active assault with a uh, showing of the flag in this area here. And I find this uh, video footage come uh, very belated because uh, this line is already claimed by the Russian side for a long, long time. So you know, for it to be only uh, re-established right now, uh, yeah, feels a little bit uh, sus. And uh, over on the northern part, there was a Lancer attack on Ukrainian forces, confirming Ukrainian presence still in this area here. Essentially, the front line did not change. So in, in that sense. So um, we, we shall continue to monitor. Uh, I don't really like this situation where the Russian claims uh, precedes evidence by so much. So it, it might be like a preemptive... Uh, declaration of capture rather than actual capture so this is not good and uh so the russians are also trying to attack from the north but according to the information from the russian side it has not been successful so this is the situation at novo mihailivka uh we further up north uh at the boyeda region the russian forces are still trying to push out but it was not it doesn't seem very successful ukrainian forces counter attack and is in the southern outskirt of boyeda again so we will continue to monitor and see how this progress so you know all these cap this mention about captures are um, no quite sad you know <laughs> if the, they declare victory and then after that the ukrainian recapture then it's kind of a embarrassment um for the up north uh yogivka uh the ukrainians basically based on the frontline change report uh, has acknowledged the Russian presence in this area here uh, in the southern part of Georgivka but that's about it no that is already claimed by the Russian side for some time so we will continue to monitor the fighting at Krasnohorivka continues to be unknown it's still pretty much in the fog of war we do not know what is currently happening right there despite the reports fight of fighting at Krasnohorivka continues all the way uh, uh, non-stop from uh, both sides they are reporting this from the 27th of february where the first sudden attack broke through so uh, we shall continue to monitor and see how this progress we move on to the adfka front so this is adfka front uh at the adfka front uh, russian forces continue their adfka offensive but the ukrainians have launched massive counter attack across the entire front line so ukrainian forces attacking at novo but motivka towards uh Stepove, Abadaichi, Semenivka, uh, Olivka, Tonenke, at Vodian, as, uh, as well as Povomaiske, Russian forces attack at Abadaichi, towards Semenivka, at Olivka, at Tonenke, at Povomaiske, and the Velske. So, if you look at this arrow system, uh, you can see that the, there is a massive, massive battle uh, going on, and the Ukrainian forces seem to have successfully reinforced themselves. Um, like I mentioned, they need to hold the line. If not, it's going to get harder and harder for them uh, because there is lesser entrenchment. So Ukrainian forces have uh, basically uh, reinforced greatly uh, in this area here and managed to launch counter-attack with armored vehicles and there is artillery being uh, uh, deployed in, in the uh, Novo Selivka, Persia and uh, Novo Propske uh, line. And there is also joint location uh, confirming... Uh, there was one artil a hot weasel of the Ukrainians getting destroyed, a gun, an artillery gun. So confirming that the Ukrainians did indeed uh, deploy an artillery line around here to, uh, to support their operations in this area here. Russian forces are not giving up yet, but there was a, a pretty disturbing footage coming out from the Russian side at Badaichi. Uh, this, this, this footage uh, show a U Russian attack. Uh, a, me a mechanized vehicle uh, basically uh, dropped uh, infantry into Badaichi and then it left. But then at, it did not go far uh, and then it got destroyed. There's a dead soldier on the APC on this, uh, on this APC itself. And um, and then after that, uh, Bradley comes into the scene and wiped out the entire infantry squad that was entrenching themselves along the tree line. Basically, it's a turkey shoot because all these infantry do not actually have uh, the appropriate... Uh, anti-tank equipments to take out uh, armored vehicles so it's a is basically a tragedy uh it, we can it's very hard to imagine you know until this age we still and this time of the conflict that there is still commanders waiting to send troops out without fire support especially with the russians having uh equipments of uh, superiority this is unimaginable uh but knowing russia you no know, the commanders will not get punished you know 
that's what it is and then another another image or video footage shows a lot of dead russian soldiers uh this time around this is on the eastern part of sepove uh this they are all lying down next to a tank and it's unclear what is the story behind it are they you know clustering there and then got killed by some kind of a maybe a high mass strike a cluster munition strike or could they be just you no know, dead soldiers being you no know, uh, unloaded at that spot to be transported further away from the front line later is unclear we do not know what is the circumstances uh it, it is possible that uh these are just collected dead soldiers from the front uh because of the lack of equi equipments from the sh from this uh image because it's a bit hard to tell if they are holding any rifles and it's and there's no such thing as a soldier without rifle so close to the front line basically even their commanders carry uh, rifles so no we shall continue to monitor and see what this progress uh also there is uh, fpv drone attacks being reported on the eastern part of uh, olivka showing the russian forces indeed is in this area here they are trying to uh, take this position the russian forces are not progressing towards semenivka just yet as they are raining fire uh, as this area seems the ukraine seems to have very strong lines around here the Ru russian forces cannot push through so they are landing fire uh on the Ukrainian forces at Semenivka and trying to push through Badaichi, which was uh, eliminated. So the situation here uh, proved that the Russian claims of capture is entirely premature and uh, it basically invalidates them uh, and their claim, which which means that the Russian sources uh, that is uh, giving information to Raiba, that source that gave information to Raiba is jumping ahead. Uh, they are basically, you know, claiming uh, before they actually actually really capture the ground so uh, that's why we need to cover information from both sides which is why you know as i mentioned the the next day after the mention of the capture i already informed you guys that deep state u8 entirely rejected the concept that the, this, the the three towns are captured so this is very good so this is continuing to continuing what we have we have always followed so we are never duped in that way so as i did mention during those days um these are only claimed by the russian side it was not acknowledged by the ukrainian side just yet uh and info and uh, because of this you know um situation that's unfolding uh and clearly shows that the russians have no firm control over the three settlements this this icon has turned into question mark because this original uh, claim of capture three days ago is now invalidated for now and uh what else can i talk about over here i believe that's all for this area here in the adf car front and we move on to, away from the adf car front um that's at the new york front the russian forces reported ukrainian attack at Bifteni. so it is just a one-off thing uh, nothing really to talk about uh moving into the bakhmut front uh at the bakhmut front in the southern flank of the bakhmut front uh, the russian forces continue to attack klishievka Andreevka and Kodyomivka. A uh, dual location of Ukrainian forces uh, over in the southeastern part of Klishevka clearly shows the front line did not change a single bit. So all this attack is very positional in nature. That means they are just launching you no know, long-range strikes, artillery strikes. Uh, it's not exactly any kind of uh, assault. The Russians don't seem to want to push through and honestly there is no need to uh, uh, it really depends on what your, what's your objective is your objective is like what the russians say demilitarization which means destroying the enemy's military then there's no need to capture ground uh, capture ground can come later after you destroy the military the ukrainians have a totally different objective their aim is actually to hold ground so they they will brief they will defend all the grounds as much as they can in the northern flank R russian forces reported to be attacking bodenivka and Ivanisky. And uh, Bodanivka is a bit funny. Uh, Raiba reported there are claims that uh, Bodanivka has been captured. I'm quite hundred percent sure it's going to be fake news because, yeah, if they even the more confirmed news end up to be invalidated, then uh, Bodanivka definitely this rumor is nonsense. Over at the Ivanisky region, as per mentioned in the frontline changes report, uh, Ukrainian mapping confirmed the Russians have basically taken the entire eastern part and southeastern part of. Ivaniske with this massive push taking confirm at least officially right now from two mappings from the, both the Russian and the Ukrainian mapping confirming Russians have captured half of Ivaniske. The northern part uh, the northern part is not acknowledged by the Ukrainian side this is only acknowledged by the Russian side about the Russians attack 
in this north uh, or capturing the parts of this northern part of Ivaniski. We'll continue to monitor what's the situation over this area here. And um, pretty close, they are going to reach the center of the uh, the 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 governor or government house the there's this radar over there so we will continue to monitor and see how this goes for Ivaniski and uh and in this area and in Krakowivka there was artillery shelling or shelling of a uh, uh, Ukrainian uh fort operating uh, base or you know command center uh, allegedly and that's all from the Bakhmut front Moving into the Sivas front, uh, as at the Sivas front, uh, the Russian forces continue to attack at Bilohorivka as well as an attack at Rozdolivka. So the Rozdolivka is reported by the Ukrainian Defense Ministry, and uh, there is also you no know, footage coming out from Bilohorivka showing the Russians are bombarding uh, Ukrainian positions. That's that's all from the Sivas front, uh, based on the uh, history, based on the information that we have been covering. Uh, usually, nothing much to expect from this front line. And uh, moving into the criminal front, this is criminal. S the The situation continues to be the same with fighting re remaining around the Terni region. There is fighting reported in at Terni with Ukrainian forces counterattacking. And uh, one of these counterattack actually was captured on film, uh, where the Ukrainian, uh, uh, Br I think I believe it's a Bradley fighting vehicle or it could be some other armored vehicles firing on U U Russian position. So actually, if you zoom in a bit more, the Ukrainian armored vehicle go go along the tree line, fired at Russian positions around here. So this actually confirms that the Russians are here, but it also confirms that this is actually a gray zone, which is why the Ukrainians' uh, claims is not wrong. So we will continue to monitor uh, this gray zone and see how this progress. The, the fact that the Russians are just holding position and allow armored vehicle to do a hit and run uh, does shows limitation on the Russian side in their capability to take out uh, the, the, the Ukrainian forces uh, capability to fight. And uh, so moving on, there's nothing over the Svetovay front. We move into the Kupians front. This is the Kupian city and the Kupians front. At the Kupians front, uh, the Ukrainian forces counterattack at Tabaivka, seemingly cap cap capturing half of Tabaivka. Uh, Russian forces are attacking at Sinkivka, according to the Ukrainians, but the Russians claim a massive Ukrainian attack over at the Sinkivka train station at the Liman Lake and, and as well as Sinkivka. So this attack over the north seems to be quite serious given how uh, the Russians are mentioning three different locations in the in a small little area so that's very interesting so anyway this is the situation at the Kopians and uh, that's all I believe yeah that's all so this is the summary for the day of uh, 737 for the first of March so anyway thank you for watching do press the like button subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next update